Have you ever wanted your own private Netflix where you can host your movies, TV shows, your photos, your videos, etc. and just be able to watch them together with your family and friends? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you exactly that. We will be setting up our own self-hosted media server which we will be able to access from anywhere on the internet and we will be able to host all kinds of media on this media server. Awesome, isn't it? Now before getting started, I just want to make it very clear that before you host any movies or TV shows, make sure you have the legal ability to do that. You can't just download a movie from the internet and just host it on your media server. You need to have legal DRM rights. I do not condone or encourage piracy, pirated content in general. So with that out of the way, let's get started and let's create our own private Netflix. We're going to make use of Streamer, which is a self-hosted streaming media server that is an open source alternative to Plex server. We'll be installing Streamer on a VPS server so that it is accessible across the internet and it will be available all the time. And the VPS that we will be making use of in this video is Bluehost VPS. And I think you've already heard about Bluehost before. It is one of the oldest web hosting services and also one of the most reliable. I've used Bluehost before and I've never faced any issues. It's incredibly fast. It's very much optimized and it's the perfect solution to do something like this. So we'll be making use of the standard VPS plan, which has two cores and two gigs of RAM memory, 30 gigs of SSD storage and one TB bandwidth. And we also get one public IP address, which we will be able to connect with a domain name so that we will be able to access our private Netflix from our custom domain. Now, since we are hosting a media server, obviously we would require more than 30 gigs of SSD storage because if you want to keep adding more and more media to your server you need more storage but that's okay because with Bluehost VPS you can mount additional drives to your existing VPS you can basically purchase how much ever storage you want and then you can add that storage to your existing VPS which is an awesome way of scaling up. So anyway, I'll just go ahead and select the standard version. It's going to give you two options, either to create a new domain or to use a domain that you already own. So you can choose either of these options or if you don't want a domain at this point of time, you can just click on I'll create my domain later. So you can go ahead and create your Bluehost account. For me, I already have a Bluehost account set up and I already have the VPS rented out. So this is my VPS page where I can find different details about my server. In order to connect to my server, I can make use of SSH and to do that, I'll just go to server IPs and I'll just copy my public IP address and I'll open up an SSH client like mobile XTerm. You can use Use any SSH client that you prefer but I use mobile XTerm all the time and I find it really easy to use so I'm going to use it here as well so I'll just click on session and I'll click on SSH and for the remote host I'll paste in my public IP address and for the username I'll set the username as root click on OK and then I'll just log in with my SSH password let me try that again and I am in. So now I am logged in and I'm connected to my VPS through SSH. So now that I have my VPS set up, the next step would be to install Streamer. So if you go to docs.streamerproject.com and click on get started, it's going to take you to a quick guide on how to install Streamer. So first of all, we'll find, we'll find out which operating system we are on. So if I say cat uh, etc slash OS release, that is going to tell you which operating system is installed on your VPS. In my case, it has CentOS version 7. So we have CentOS 7 running on our VPS. So the first step would be to install OpenJDK version 8 because Streamer is written in Java. Now you can go ahead and install OpenJDK version 8 with this command over here. All the commands that I'm executing in this video, you can find all of them in the description below. So go ahead and check out the description for all the commands. So this is going to install OpenJDK version 8. The reason why we are installing version 8 is because in the installation guide, uh, the author there asked us to install uh, Java 8. So we don't want to 
use a newer version than Java 8 or an older version because those versions of Java may very much be incompatible with Streamer. So to be on the safer side, we are installing Java 8, which is recommended as mentioned here. So I'll go ahead and execute this command and this is going to install Java 8 on our VPS. Awesome, we have installed Java. The next step is to install a firewall and to allow port 80 through this firewall so that we will be able to access our self-hosted media server or our private Netflix from across the internet. So in order to first install firewall, you can just say sudo yum install firewall D and it looks like firewall D is already installed. That's perfect. So if I just go ahead and say firewall CMD dash dash state you can see that it's not currently running. So in order to start it, I'll say sudo systemctl enable firewall D. And now I'll just go ahead and reboot my VPS. I'll log back in and I'll say firewall cmd dash dash state again. Now you can see the firewall is running. So the next step is to allow port 80 from the firewall. And before we do that, we need to find out the default zone. We need to find out what is the default zone that the firewall is using. So I'll say firewall CMD get default zone. And the default zone turns out to be public. So to allow the port, I'll say firewall CMD zone equal to public, which is the default zone. And then I'll say add port equal to 80 slash TCP. And that's going to allow port 80, which corresponds to HTTP to be accessible from the internet. Awesome. So now we can just go ahead and download Streama. So if I go to Streama's GitHub releases page, you can see the latest release has the log4j security update. So I'll just copy the link of the jar file and I'll come back to my SSH session. I will create a new directory called Streama and I will download the jar file into this directory right here. So I have downloaded the jar file and I need to still make it executable so that I'll be able to execute it with Java. So I'll say chmod plus x streamer.jar. And if I say lsll again, you can see the jar file is now executable. So we can now go ahead and execute or run streamer right now and our media server should be available. But by default, streamer is going to run on port 8080, but we do not want that. We want it to be accessible on the default HTTP port, which is 80, which is what we have allowed through the firewall earlier. So in order to do that, you can just create a new file called application.yml in the same directory as the jar file. And inside that, you can paste this configuration right here. So basically what we are telling is for the streamer server to run on the port 80. So I can just go ahead and save this file now. And now I'll say Java space dash jar and I'll run streamer right now. Unfortunately, it did not work. We got an error saying that the Tomcat connector configured uh, to listen on port failed to start. The port may already be in use. So what it's basically saying is that port 80 is already being used by another service. So let's go ahead and figure out which service is using the port 80 and let's free up the port 80 so that we, or in other words, streamer can use it. So I'll type in grep space W and I'll search for 80 slash TCP inside the file etc slash services. So all the services that are currently running are stored in this particular file right here. And what I'm doing is I'm trying to search for the service that you that is using the port 80 on TCP. So if I just hit enter, it looks like a web server is already running on our VPS that is using up this port 80. So if I go ahead and say system CTL, status httpd which is the apache web server you can see it is active and it's running and it is using port 80 and that's why we are not able to use port 80 so i'll just go ahead and stop this i'll say system ctl uh, stop httpd and now if i say status again you can see it's no longer active so now that port 80 is free let me go ahead and run streamer again and hopefully this time it works
All right, would you look at that? It says Grails application running at HTTP localhost port 80 in environment production. That means our streamer application is up and running. So now if I just open up my browser and then just go to the IP address of my VPS, I should be able to access my streamer dashboard. There you go. That is my streamer dashboard and I can now log in with my credentials. So it says right here, to use admin for both the fields if it's the first time logging in so i'll do the same admin for the username and admin for the password obviously you can change these credentials as soon as you log in by just going to your admin dashboard and go to users and click on edit and now you can just go ahead and choose a new password or you can even change your username awesome so anyway so if i just come back to the dashboard it's going to redirect me to the settings page because I need to configure some settings before I can go ahead and use streamer. The first setting is the upload directory. The default upload directory as mentioned here is slash data slash streamer. And I will use the default path because I don't want to mess up any settings. I'll click on validate. The next setting is the MovieDB API key. For those of you who don't know what MovieDB is, it's like a service that uh, provides you different metadata about the movies and TV shows like the thumbnails for movies, the synopsis, the descriptions, the actor names, uh, the actor photos, etc, etc. So we need to get ourselves an API key so that streamer will be able to fetch all the metadata about the TV shows and movies that we are hosting on our server. So in order to do that, I'll just uh, go to the moviedb.org slash account slash sign up and I'll just uh, try to go for a new account. All right, so I'll go to settings and click on API and I'll request a new API key. Select developer, accept all the terms and the application name, I'll just give it as streamer media server. The application URL, I'll just uh, give in my URL and the application summary, you can just explain in your own words how you plan on using the MovieDB API. And then the first name, last name, and that's it. Now we have an API key. So I'll just copy my API key. I'll go back to my streamer dashboard and I'll paste it here. Click on validate and the API key is valid and it can be used. Awesome. So if I just scroll down, there is a base URL. Uh, so this is the URL that will be sent if you want to invite new users to your uh, media server. By default, it is set to localhost port 8080, but we will change that later. Oh, and also you can change the logo that you want to display. For example, this is the default logo, but you can change this to anything that you like, because why not? It's your own private Netflix, remember? So yeah, I'm not gonna change it right now, but you can, and you can set a favicon, uh, you can set a login background. You can change this background uh, that appears on the login screen. And obviously you can change the title as well. Let me just change it to my private Netflix. So yeah, you can do all kinds of customizations you want and click on save settings and that's saved. So now if I just go to manage content, uh, I can just go ahead and add a new TV show or movies or other videos. So for example, let's say I want to add a TV show. So I'll just click on create new show and I will add the TV show uh, that I like avatar the last airbender so you can see as soon as i selected it it's going to retrieve all the metadata of that particular tv show by using the movie db api so it also got the thumbnail image so it's also going to get all the thumbnail images for each episode or each season of this show all because of the movie db api key that we have given it which is awesome so i'll just click on save show and the show is now successfully added. So you can just click on fetch episodes and it asks for which seasons would you like to fetch the episodes, leave blank to fetch for all seasons. I will just leave it blank, click on okay. And you can see it has automatically added all the episodes. So now that the entire episodes of the show are added, I can now go ahead and add the actual video file for each of these episodes. So the most straightforward way of doing this would be to just drag and drop the corresponding video file to the corresponding episode like that. And it's just going to upload the video file. Or a more easier way of doing it would be to make use of the local file browser feature wherein you can just uh, name 
name your episodes or your video files based on this regular expression right here. You can obviously configure or change this regular expression by modifying it in the application.yaml file, which we have just created to change the port. And you can just put in whatever regular expression you want. And once you do that, you can just place your media, all your episodes of a TV show or your movies by naming them according to this regular expression pattern right here. And then you can just directly go ahead and import them to Streamer just like that. And Streamer is now automatically going to retrieve the metadata of your TV shows or your movies from the MovieDB API. So anyway, whichever works for you, whichever you think is more convenient, you can just go ahead and do that. So anyway, if I come back to my homepage, you can see there is a new TV show, Avatar, The Last Airbender, one of my most favorite TV shows ever. And if I just click on play, you can see we have added only one episode and that one episode is playing uh, by default. So you can add all your episodes like this, uh, either by just dragging and dropping them or by just placing them in a folder on your VPS. And then you can just directly import it to streamer by naming the video files according to the regular expression pattern, which you can change using the application.yaml file. Now, obviously you might want to add more users to your media server so that you can watch together with people or you can give other people like your friends or family access to your, to your collection of movies and TV shows. And in order to do that, you can just go to uh, admin dashboard and go to users and click on create user. And then you can just put in uh, the new username, the password, uh, and then you can give the roles. Um, and also make sure that you select enabled so that the users can log in and view the videos. Streamer also has a feature wherein you can sync watch with other people. So when you want to watch a movie or a TV show or just any other private videos together, you can just use this feature and it's going to make your life a lot easier because both you and the other person that you're watching the video with will be in sync while watching it. So yeah, that's about it. The final thing that I would like to show you is how to link your own domain so that you don't have to access your media server through your IP address like this. So you can go ahead and purchase a new domain from Bluehost, but for me, I already have a domain with me and I'd like to use that domain with my VPS hosting, with my private Netflix server. So what I'll do is I'll go to my domain's DNS settings on the domain registrar that I used and I'll add a new A type record with the name at the rate and it should point to the public IP address of my VPS which is this so I'll just copy it and I'll paste it here I don't need HTTP colon slash slash at the beginning just the IP address I'll set the TTL to 60 and I'll click on add record and it looks like there is already another a type record so before I add this record I will delete the a type record click on delete and now I'll add this record and perfect, so the record is created successfully. It might take anywhere between 20 minutes to, I don't know, three or four hours for the DNS changes to propagate. So I'm gonna pause this video right here and I'll come back once the changes reflect. So it did not take much time. If I just ping my media server dot online, you can see it is resolving to my public IP address of the VPS. So it means the domain is now successfully linked. So now if I go to my media server dot online in my browser, there you go. I am now able to access Streamer from my custom domain name like this. So I'll just log in as admin. And now if I just go to my admin dashboard, I'll change this base URL to my media server dot online and I'll just save these settings. Awesome. So I have created and set up my own private Netflix where I can host my movies, TV shows, videos, etc. And I've also linked it with a custom domain name. So I can now add more users to my media server and watch the content together with sync play, etc, etc. And one more thing that I'd like to point out is if you close your SSH session just like that, and if you try to access your media server, you will not be able to connect to it because when you close your SSH session, the streamer jar file that you're running is also going to be terminated. So a workaround for this would be to install something known as screen. So let me log in back to my SSH session again, and I'll install screen by saying yum install screen. 
and then just type in screen and this is going to create a new screen for you and inside this screen you can just go to your streama directory and run your streama file here and once streama is running you can just detach from the screen by just holding ctrl a and then press d and now you are back to your original screen so if i just type in screen dash ls you can see there is an, another screen that is running on the pid 7935 which has the streamer running so now if i just go ahead and disconnect from my ssh server i will still be able to access my streamer server because the streamer server is still running in another screen that is still active so even though if i disconnect from my ssh session the media server is still up and it is still running so this is a pretty good workaround to fix that issue you do not have to be connected to your VPS through SSH all the time. You can just create a new screen and run Streama on that screen and then detach or disconnect from that screen. All right, so that will be it for this video. Hope you liked it. If you did, please do not forget to leave a thumbs up below. If you're not yet a subscriber, please do hit that subscribe button and also turn on the bell icon to receive instant updates about my channel. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, cheers.